H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so I'll quickly summarize for 5 minutes or 10 minutes what we discussed in the previous class and then we'll get started with today's class. So, okay, now, So in the previous class, uh, we uh, we discussed on uh, what is how to create a table. So we saw like uh, we need to create a table using uh, create table, and we need to give table name uh, for example employee, and then and then we saw that uh, we need to give uh, the column names like emp id and an integer, and if you if the column name like emp name uh, varchar. Back at 20. So this is how we normally create a table. And uh, also in the previous class, we saw that uh, we saw what is a primary key. So for example, so primary key is a unique identifier for for a particular lo particular row of a table. So so in case uh, so in case if we have uh, okay, so in case if we have employee ID, employee name, so. Um, and so employee name can like two or more employees can have the same employee name so in that case your employee id can play the role of primary key so primary is a primary key is a column using which you can differentiate each row of a table so uh, so uh, if you take employee table employee id will be the unique for for each row so in this case uh, employee id will can form the primary key so if you want to make employee id as a primary key you need to give like this primary key okay so now uh, the points which we discussed about primary key is so you cannot insert uh, cannot insert null values uh, cannot insert null values for primary key so so for example when you declare this prime employee id as a primary key so when you try to insert for example insert into employee values and when you try to write for uh, here like uh, null comma uh, you, if you want to give the name like Meghnath so in this case uh, in this case when you since this employee id is a primary key when you try to execute this query it will throw error because a primary key will not allow null values okay and also primary key will not allow duplicate values since this is the column which we are using to differentiate other rows you cannot uh, you cannot insert duplicate values like for example you cannot add one and then and then again you cannot add uh, you cannot add one for other other employee like uh, like you cannot give like this the moment you insert first record and when you try to insert the second record with the same employee id it will throw error so a primary key cannot have null values a primary key will not allow duplicate values and uh, yeah uh, just a second I'm saying some I'm getting some questions so so just a second so all of you are able to hear me I'm getting uh, okay so yeah I'm getting some message saying like uh, not not able to hear so okay 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 uh, okay so now the issue is resolved yeah okay so uh, I'm just saying like a primary key uh, cannot uh, we cannot insert null values for a primary key and 
and and we cannot insert uh, we cannot insert duplicate values uh, for even duplicate values for a primary key okay so now um, after that we discussed on um, what is a not null constraint and then uh, if you if you make a column as not null like this if you make a column as not null uh, you cannot insert you cannot insert null values for that so so see here first name first name we made it as varchar and we made here as not null so when you make it as not null you cannot insert null values for first name so but here since last name we are making it null so so you can insert null values for last name because some employees may have last name or may not have last name so in that case we made this uh, we made this as null so so and so we discussed on check constraint so for those who missed they can go through the video and uh, definitely that will give the complete idea of the course what we discussed in the previous class and also we discussed on small date time so small date time and date time like we have uh, five variables five data types for storing five data types for storing date and time so those are those are date so date date time date time and date time too and we have small date time so like how we have uh, how we have integer so integer or uh, or begin begin or tiny int so like these are all data types which are used for storing integers for storing numbers so these are the data types which are used for storing date and time formats so so date will only store uh, date uh, if you want to store only date part of date and time will store only the time date time you can store date and time together for example let me show you some sample code so if you want to get the current date current date uh, you need to write select get date so get date get date is a function get date is a function in sql server which will return you the current date and time so when i execute this you can see that so let me connect to the database okay see now when i execute this i'm i'm actually seeing the current date and time so the current date is 28 may 2014 and the time is 5:50 am so this is what you are seeing so when you execute it from your end you will see the date as current your your time like um uh, like 27th 27th may evening or uh, night 8 8:20 okay okay so now let's see how to connect to sql server so so i'll close this window and i'll tell you how to connect again so let me close this so once you install sql server so so all of you uh, when you are done with the installation of sql server uh, with the steps which i mentioned um, which i mentioned in in the link which i sent you okay so uh, i'll i'll just tell quick summer I'll, I'll just tell how to install sql server uh, that is a common mistake which students are doing now uh, so whatever you have sql server go to control panel so if you are seeing any issues with uh, installation of sql server go to control panel and then go to programs and features so um, you need to uninstall them so so you need to go to um, programs and features you need to select this and then uninstall those whatever you see uh, for example if you see here i am seeing like this sql server 2008 r2 or whatever you are seeing sql server try to uninstall them so right click on them uh, right click on un uninstall completely uh, you should not be seeing anything related to sql server sql server 2008 so when you do it uh, for this one uh, when you uninstall for sql server 2008 r2 64 bit so this I'm telling for those who are having issues with SQL Server, so they need to uninstall uninstall this and do a complete reinstall. So right click on this and uninstall this. Once you are done with uninstalling complete all all the components of SQL Server, so go to the link which we provided in um, in the welcome email, or 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 let me ping in this um, in this chat window. So. So you need to go to database testing and welcome email and inside this we have given uh, the link for installing so, so you need to go I'm just telling how to install so click on this link which we sent okay so you need to copy this 
and and I'm just giving the link for all of you so have a look at this link okay so this is the link uh, which you need to download so uh, so you need to click on that link and then click on this download button and then if your computer is as mentioned in this document which I sent if your computer is 32 bit computer you need to select these two and if your computer is 64 bit you need to select these two so my computer is 64 bit so what I did I just selected um, this SQL Server Express x64 and then I selected SQL Server management studio x64 so select those two and then do not run these two so when you select those two you will see here what are those you selected so i repeat again as mentioned in the document select only those components depending on your computer whether it's 32 bit or 64 bit so once you select both of them click on next and and don't uh, run this so you just save it in your desktop somewhere so so now if you see here um, you you don't run this okay so the common mistake which uh, which students do is they will click on this run so when they click on run what happens when you click on run is the software might not install sequentially see now it is showing management studio so i don't want to install management studio first i want to install sql express first so this is the sequence which you need to install you need to install sql express and then you need to install sql management studio okay so some sometimes students do a common mistake like they will install this and they will try to install this so when you do that way it will not work for you so you have to install sql express first and then you have to install management studio okay so if you having 64 bit install this and then install management studio so for that what you need to do is you need to click on this one and and do save as okay so so i repeat here uh, you need to you need to click on uh, this one and this one and you need to save it okay just click on save as and then and then you can save it somewhere in the desktop you can save it somewhere in the desktop similarly you save the other file okay so so when you save both the files somewhere in the desktop or somewhere then you go to that folder you go to that folder and execute both of them see this is also there and once you save it once you save both of them first first you need to execute uh, you need to execute the this one first you need to right click on this this file and run as administrator right click on this file uh, when you save it in the desktop or in some folder right click on this and run as administrator okay so is my voice breaking or is it clear for all of you Is my voice is breaking or is it clear? Okay. Okay. So So that is about installing. So I just quickly summarize for those um, who have issues with SQL Server installation. Uh, go to control panel and uninstall all the softwares of related to SQL Server and then come back to this link click on this link and don't run those softwares when you are downloading so download them into some folder and save it into the desktop or somewhere and then run one by one so execute the first one you need to execute SQL Express first and then you need to ex execute management studio okay uh, and then you should be able to uh, install successfully so do these steps and and if you face any issues uh, you can you can just uh, let me know okay uh, you need to click on next uh, so when you when you run that software right uh, you need to click on next 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 like that so until it says finish uh, finish you need to you need to in, you need to do next 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 okay so finally it will tell finish and when you are done with this first one uh, up to finish and then uh, it will take around 15 minutes to install first one and then you start the installation for the second one second one will take around around 10 minutes to install so overall you will it will take around half an hour to install both the softwares okay now uh, now let's go to how to connect to sql server so just click on all programs 
and you will see Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 and click on this SQL Server Management Studio so when you click on this SQL Server Management Studio it will ask you to <coughs> sorry so here you need to select um, Windows Authentication so select Windows Authentication and then click on connect okay so now when I click on connect yeah so that's all when I click on connect I'm a, I connected to SQL server so here um, here I create a database called DB, dbt 24th match 24th May batch so you need to click on new query so for example if I'm disconnected again I can simply click on connect so so I can click on this uh, for example if I got disconnected if you leave for half an hour or one hour it will get disconnected so what you can do is again again the same thing click on start all programs and then and then you you need to go to visual studio r2 and then you can open management studio and and you can connect okay or you can you can simply click on this button you can simply click on this button to connect so so what I need to do I just need to click on this and then I need to select ok select windows authentication click on connect ok and then go to databases and and create a database uh, so in the previous class we created a database called dbt 24th may so you need to create that database so this is how you need to create a database so create database database name for example dummy1 so so this is how we need to create this is how we need to create a database create database dummy one so when you create this when you execute this so now when you refresh this databases right click on this refresh it you can see that there is a database called dummy one okay like that in the previous class I have I have created database called dbt 24th may batch okay now I am I am uh, I'm getting a question saying like what is SQL server authentication okay so in in SQL Server we have two types of authentication modes. One is Windows authentication and the other one is SQL Server authentication. So while installing, all of you uh, when you click on next 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 while installing, you would have selected you would have selected uh, SQL Server authentication. I mean Windows authentication. So Windows authentication doesn't require a password because uh, because when you log into a computer when you log into a computer then you are going to log into SQL Server. So when you select Windows authentication, that means you are the, you are the authenticated user by Windows. System has already authenticated you. Using that system, you are able to connect to SQL Server. So so when you select Windows authentication here, you don't need to enter the password. So when I select Windows authentication, I don't need to enter the password. But but when I select SQL Server authentication, for example for example I am the sysadmin so what I need to do I can create another login so let's try to create another login so so now what I'll do here is I'll I'll click on security so you see a folder called security so here you're seeing a folder called security so in this what I'll do is I'll click on security tabs logins now uh, now I'll right click on this and create a new login okay so so I'm going to create a new login now let's see how to create it all of you please uh, see if you can understand I just expanded this I just expanded the security security here and then and then um, click on logins okay so some of your I mean is my screen is frozen or you're able to see uh, as and when I I'm explaining yeah okay okay fine yeah so I'm just repeating uh, I'm just saying how to create a login how to create a login so now you need to expand this so you need to expand this security and you need to click on expand this logins and now you can right click on this and click on create new login so when you click on this new login 
okay here I need to give the login name for example let me give the login name as um, login name as so when you are working for a company uh, you will have the login names uh, as per so every user will have a login name so when you are giving when you are selecting Windows authentication you need to give the login name Windows login name okay but when I'm uh, since I'm going to you got it so Windows authentication you have to give the login name of your uh, Windows system so for example if you see here uh, start control panel you will see that uh, in um, administrative tools and in the computer management so in the computer management I mean these details are not required uh, as a tester but uh, just quickly I'll just show you here you will see local users and groups so here if you see users so these are the users for my computer so I have a guest user I have make 6 and I have make that and I have ready so I have these are the users which I have so when I when I lock my computer uh, or when I log off my computer so I will see these four users so anyone can log into my computer like this in, in inside an organization you will have lot of lot of employee IDs uh, so so in that case when you are selecting Windows authentication here when you are selecting Windows authentication you need to give the user ID user ID of that employee okay and when you are giving SQL server authentication you don't um, you can give any login name for example I'm giving uh, I'm giving the login name as make um, M E G uh, 18 okay so I just entered M E G 18 as username and here I'm selecting SQL Server authentication. So here, let me give the password as uh, let me give the password as um, pwd add one two three four five. Okay. So let me copy this. Let me give pwd in capital letter. And let me copy this. So now I'm giving this password for this user Meg18. So I'm giving this password. Now um, now let me once I add these details, I need to go to server roles. I'm giving some public role we have different roles actually so server admin or a DB creator bulk admin like that we have different roles so I mean we don't need to focus more on this and then you need to go to user mappings and you need to select which database you want him to have access so so I want him to have access for dbt 24th May batch okay now now that's all so I can I can actually give status grant and enable I'll just repeat again I'm canceling this so what I did was I went to the security security folder and then right click on the logins click on new login and then I'm giving the name I have selected SQL server authentication and then I'm giving the name as meg18 and then I'm giving the password as pwd at rate 12345 and then I went to the server roles I selected public here went to user mappings I selected a database which I need to give him access and then and then I need to click on OK okay so that's it now now when um, when that user for that user I'll tell my I'll tell the user ID and password so what he will do is he will he will open a SQL server um, he will try to open a SQL server 2008 R2 and then he will I'll tell him the password so whatever I have given so what he will do is he will select SQL server authentication and he will give the user ID as make, make 18 and he will enter the password now he'll click on connect so for the first time when he is able he is trying to connect it will ask him to change the password so what he needs to do okay let's change the password let, let's give the new password as pwd at 123456 so copy this and paste it here now click on connect so this is how now if you see here the current user who has connected here is meg18 okay so so he can expand this databases and since i gave access only for db2 db24 may batch and he cannot expand other databases so when he tries to expand any other database he will get an error saying uh, the database db testing is not accessible he can only expand this database which we have 24 may batch okay and that too he cannot see the tables see now he is not able to see any tables so for example uh, let me go to this this user 
and uh, and if you see here inside this database 24th may i am seeing the tables as i am seeing employee job applicant sports but this user this user whom i created is not able to see any tables okay the reason why he is not able to see any tables is when i when i right click on again go to the security go to security uh, logins and right click on this make it in properties when you see here uh, uh, server roles I gave public I have not given even um, anything for example if you take for this database for this database DVT 24th May for this user I have given only public access I am not I have not given data reader data writer data read data reader or DDL admin so if I have given data reader he should have seen all the all the tables if I have given data writer he can actually update or he can do some updates or something right operations since i have not selected any of these he cannot access until i give i give permission for this permission for that user okay so now let's try to give a uh, permission for make 18 so here this window i logged in as admin who is Meghnath. so now let's try to give select access for him so now this is how you need to give a select access grant select on what is the table we have in database in this database we have a table called employee so now let's try to give let's try to go to that database you need to select here the database which you want to work on so let me select dbt 24th may batch and then you need to give grant select on 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 what is the table employee to what is the user make 18 so this is the syntax if you want to grant access select access for employee on table employee to make that make 18 which you just created the user so grant select on employee table to this user so execute this so I executed this now let me go to the make 18 login okay so now I came to this login other login where make 18 has been logged in so now let me refresh this and see now I'm able to see employee table the moment sysadmin gives me access for employee table I'm able to see but still I'm not able to see other tables okay and then again if the if I decided like okay I don't want to give access for him I can I can actually do revoke so the moment I do revoke select on employee to employee ID make 18 so when I execute this he cannot again again he cannot see this so when he refresh this he cannot see that table employee as well okay so just quickly summarize so I just created now how to create a user how to create a new user and uh, and how to create SQL server authentication give, give some password and select the data database which you want to give him access in future now when that user tries to log in with uh, with his user ID password since I gave public I have not given data reader or data writer option he cannot have option to select data or he cannot have any option to see the tables if you want to give access for individual tables for that user you need to write a query like grant select on employee to make 18 once you give like that so he can actually log into the database and he can he can see the tables which are belongs to that database so any questions here so windows authentication uh, it will not ask for password because you already logged into the system that means you are you are authenticated user SQL Server authentication is something like where it lasts for user ID and password. Okay, so any questions so far, or or is it like nothing is clear, or some part is clear, or hundred percent clear? What is it? How many of you? Uh, for how many of you it's clear? Okay, so just to summarize, uh, Windows authentication will not ask for Windows authentication will not ask for password S so so now uh, so I'll just show you so when you try to connect to SQL server so let me open SQL server so here when you try to connect to SQL server so when you are selecting Windows authentication so it will not uh, it not it is not asking for password because I have already logged into the system I'm I'm now seeing SQL Server window. That means my system, if it is having user ID password, I have entered that password correctly. That means I am already authenticated. 
okay i am already authenticated so so i don't need to enter user id password here but but if you want to authenticate again if you want to do authentication again then you can give sql server authentication or uh, one more place where very widely uh, sql server authentication is used is um uh, sql server authentication is used is assume that i want to give access for my database for a person who is not employee of our organization only employees will have only employees of my organization will have windows id okay so for example okay others will not have this windows id in that case i have to select sql server authentication and i need to give him create him user id and password so that he can access outside the organization is it making sense when to uh, so windows authentication is you can give only for the employees of of your windows users all windows users of your organization okay so now let me give you one more example so now if you see in my computer so i have these are the users so let me i have make 6 megnad ready and and uh, so these are the users i have for my computer so when i lock it when i lock the computer you will see uh, like this or when i log off and when i try to log in in the in the window uh, windows system you will see three icons which user you want to log in so you will see like this and here you will see here a uh, guest user and here you will see like make make 6 and here here you will see like make not so this is the current user so all of you seen any time like this when you log off uh, when you try to log into windows if you have different accounts for that system if you have different accounts for the system in windows while logging in it will show the users all the users so you have to select which user you want to log in how many of you seen this type uh, when you log off and when you try to log in yeah so all of you would have seen this so now when i have a password for this megnad account so when i click on this megnad it lasts for the password so so that means when i am entering password and entering uh, to the computer that means i know the password i am already authenticated i am already authenticated so so i don't want to enter the password again when i open sql server okay so that is the reason why windows authentication doesn't require password so now let me let me show you one more thing so i am i am connecting with uh, uh, with the soup so now i am going to um, connect with another user so for example i am trying to give another login for see now go to security and logins right click on this new login now when i select windows authentication i can give login names of those who are here only i can give login names for those users who are in my uh, who are in my computer management only these users make six i can give see now uh, let me try to give windows authentication here and i'm giving make six okay and then the moment when i click on search uh, here if i enter here make six check names you can see that magnat pc slash make six is there because for this computer makes this is a user so in in this uh, when you try when you are trying to log into this computer you will see like this makes six guest and magna but now when i try to give for windows authentication when i try to give some other user say for example uh, make 20 now when i click on search when i write here make 20 he he is not there this user is not there in my windows system so if you search here he will not find and user is not found okay so windows authentication you can give only for those uh, who whose accounts are there in the windows system you cannot give for anyone uh, windows authentication okay so now uh, is it clear now windows authentication and sql server authentication for how many of you is it clear okay so not seeing the response from all of you anyone wants me to tell about windows authentication i'll i'll unmute you so you can take couple of minutes to explain what is windows authentication who can tell just ping me i can tell like that anyone
anyone wants to just tell about windows authentication okay so no one is uh, comfortable to tell about windows authentication okay so let me make it still clear uh, okay so let me make it still clear about windows authentication so when you want to give if the first point you can give windows authentication for those who for those user users who are there configured in your windows machine if you are an individual okay so for individuals you can give windows authentication see here um, see here when i when i try to add uh, for example when i try to add a user so right click on this login new login and when i when i click on search for example when i click on uh, make here and click on search here when i am searching for example when i am searching for make uh, make 6 okay so it is actually searching for Magnat PC slash Meg6. If you are working for an organization, for example, if you are working for Infosys or some company, it'll it'll, it'll search in the domain. It'll search for in the domain like Infosys slash MEG. So it'll search in throughout the organization, complete organization Active Directory Windows account, and if that user is found, it'll it'll click on it'll it'll come like this. It'll come a a uh, a line will come under that and it'll show you. It Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.